this is not normal. This is not okay. And we can do better. And, and I could tell you literally thousands of stories of individuals that were, have been, you know, at one time in their life struggling with this, in some cases, intensely. And that they have found freedom and that they are doing better and that they are so much more happy without that plaguing their life. So freedom and recovery is, is a real thing and it's possible. Welcome to Husband Material. Today on the show, we have Clay Olson, co-founder and president of Fight the New Drug. Welcome, Clay. Oh, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, this is great. It's the year 2021 when this episode is coming out, and it feels to me like Fight the New Drug is getting kind of old. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, we started uh, Fight the New Drug uh, over 11 years ago now, and uh, um Man, I even back then when we had all the kind of naive ambition in the world, um, we I don't think we could have imagined where yeah. this journey would have taken us. It is amazing. Guys, if you are not aware of what Fight the New Drug, FTND, is, this is a nonprofit organization leading the movement against porn. If you've seen those T-shirts, porn kills love, things like that. That's fight the new drug. And 12 years after you started this thing, I feel like this global movement against porn is gaining so much momentum. Oh yeah. There, you know, when we, when we first started, um, it, it was, there were very few people we could find kind of confronting this or talking about it and nobody that we could find talking to young people about it. It was, it was all mm -hmm. kind of either, you know, it, it, some discussions within academia, um, a lot of discussions kind of uh, among adults talking about some of the challenges. Uh, but but it was a, a very, you know, few and far between kind of thing. And today we have seen so many creative and talented individuals come out of the woodwork to to open their mouths and raise their voices uh, and use their talents and skills to create organizations or programs or, and efforts um, to join the, the larger community in the movement uh, to, to make a dent in the difference. And uh, it is so inspiring to, to work alongside these individuals and groups. Um, and uh, again, the conversation is, is probably uh, just as controversial as it's ever been, uh, but it's also mm. uh, has more, uh, uh, more energy and spark and, uh, and force and power behind it than it's ever had as well. And I love how this is a movement for young people. You reached my generation with this when nobody else was talking about it. And it has meant the world. And even if you're old watching or listening to this or you feel old, this is for you too. Don't worry. I feel like Fight the New Drug has taken freedom from porn forward and, and shown us what it, what it can be, especially online. Yeah. I mean, we, we started this kind of, we wanted to change the conversation. Uh, the conversation that was being had when we, you know, when I was growing up and, and kind of among my peers was um, either there was a conversation among some of my peers that was like, hey, porn was fine, it's cool, it was normal, get with the times. Um, or there was like a very shame-based conversation among mm. adults toward youth kind of a finger-wagging approach. And, yeah. and we wanted to kind of disrupt all of that and say, look, let's come together on on facts on personal accounts on stories on science and let's let's uh kind of you know regardless of your political or religious affiliations let's come together on a public health discussion and make mm. make it cool um to <laughs> to stand up against pornography yeah which was a daunting task or, or just a you know one that we weren't sure uh, we could achieve but again i say this i didn't we didn't start anything that the, the energy and the electricity around a desire to um to understand this topic better was already there it was in existence we just came and put like kind of a brand to it and mm. and 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 saw the, the um you know people just gravitating to this because there was such a, a desire to understand the subject better and have a conversation that wasn't shame based and a conversation that was that was kind of um, uh, uh, allowing for people to to you know recognize their own struggle but also kind of 
unify with a larger movement and 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 feel accepted and feel loved and feel like mm. they have people in their corner. And you've done that so well. I I, I want to say maybe even a little bit more than just putting a brand on it. I just watched that free documentary series, Brain Heart World. Amazing. Oh, if, thank you. If you're watching or listening to this and you haven't seen it, go to brainheartworld.org right now and then come back because it's just so well made and it, and it has that quality to it of helping us feel loved, accepted, supported with the facts and with the the kind of information that I would have loved to have when I was a kid. Yeah, I, I mean that was really the goal behind that. I mean that that documentary series, the three part documentary series, took us you know years to to uh, to work on. We had we were working on that for years, um, getting it right. In fact, I, our first draft of the first episode we got back from our, our editors and. Um, and we literally kind of saw it and realized we were going down the wrong path. We scrapped the mm. whole thing. We started wow. over with a completely new script, uh, kind of going after it. So, so we really d- tried to work hard to make sure that was, um, not a documentary for parents talking about the challenges of youth, but talking directly to the young people, yeah. say, you know, talking about the, 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 the realities of this issue. Um, and, and, you know, and, and so we're, we're proud of it. We think, millions of people have seen it uh, up to yeah. this point and we hope that more and more and more will see it because it's, we didn't do it to make it buck. We did, in fact, right. quite the opposite. Um, <laughs> we, we, uh, we're, we're doing it to kind of spread the message because if that can help people recognize the realities. Um, and, and we traveled around the world to, to get experts uh, from um, Germany to, to Japan uh, through, throughout all the United States um, we, we traveled all over to kind of make sure that we were getting the experts getting stories that would kind of cultivate the message we wanted to portray. And that title, Brain Heart World, tells us what is at stake, our brains, our hearts, and our worlds, and, and it just shows the impact that this work is doing. Yeah. So here we are 12 years later, and yet this year, for many people, freedom from porn has been more difficult than ever with the pandemic, with Pornhub. And so you've talked with thousands of people who want to remove porn from their lives. And I wonder what are some of the common obstacles you hear about these days that people are facing? I think that people need to realize that we are collectively uh, dealing with this challenge to a level and an intensity that no generation in the history of the world has ever seen. I think that recognizing that will help kind of put into hmm. to perspective perhaps the struggle that you you are facing if you are facing a struggle currently like you are not alone and unfortunately the world our society uh, um, as the way it is currently moving is, is pushing you with the, with an incredible amount of force to struggle in these ways and so uh, I think there's a lot of guilt and a lot of shame surrounding uh, one's behavior uh with with pornography but i think there's we also need to have uh, a lot of compassion and understanding for perhaps the the reasons uh that 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 we are dealing with this it doesn't mean it's not an allowance and it's not an acceptance of like you know you know this is this is the reality and so just you accept it no absolutely not um this is not normal this is not okay and we can do better. And, and I could tell you literally thousands of stories of individuals that were, have been, you know, at one time in their life struggling with this, in some cases, intensely. And that they have found freedom and that they are doing better and that they are so much more happy without that plaguing their life. So freedom and recovery is is a real thing and it's possible, but it, but it's something that I, I think that shame and guilt can only exacerbate. It only compounds the struggle. And so I think we need to separate ourselves from that and give ourselves a level of like uh, compassion um, mm-hmm. for who we are and, uh, and, and for our potential and then work from that place. So that doesn't necessarily, I, I didn't necessarily answer your question. What are, this, what are the, some of the reasons people are struggling? You know, they're, they're so new, uh, varied, but I think that there is a theme we see and it's, it just kind of comes back to the world that we live in. Some of the natural challenges that we face, this generation faces that others did not have to deal with. I love what you said about just validating 
the challenges that we're up against right now, that this is unique. The, the world maybe has never put as much pressure on us to use pornography as it is now. Correct. And, and, and it's, uh, for a lot of people, it's a low hanging fruit. Um, because you know, we are dealing, uh, from a mental health standpoint, we are dealing with challenges that we, again, we have never faced this pandemic in 2020, uh, that, that, you know, is still a part of our lives. Um, even in 2021, uh, this is something that is creating more and more challenges. Suicide rates are higher than they've ever been. Um, and a lot of us look to coping mechanisms. A lot of us kind of turn to something that can give us immediate uh, kind of relief. And when we kind of keep on pushing that same button, it develops neurologically a, a neurological pathway that, that it becomes that, that force, that, that, that low hanging fruit that just, we turn to almost an autopilot um, yeah. in seeking for some relief from the challenge that we face. Yeah. So we have this little portable dopamine pump. Yes. The low hanging fruit which is always here, always available, always receptive, always subservient. Yes. Always accepting. And that tells me more about what we really need, which is tenderness and yes. connection and compassion. I, I find that addiction, and, and again, not everybody that struggles with pornography is dealing with an addiction. Um, uh, you know, we, we often talk about addiction like an on-off switch, like you have it or you don't have it. And, and really, we need to think of it more like a dimmer switch. And it's kind of like, to what degree do you struggle? And, and for some people, it, it does qualify and classify as a, addictive behavior. And for others, it's more obsessive or compulsive type patterns. And for others, in the early stages, it's, it's habituation. It's, it's kind of more habit. And so, it, it, you know, rather than asking yourself, do I have an addiction? It's more like, to what degree do I st struggle and how is that impacting my life negatively? And, and that can put us in a place where we can start to address that um, um, more, more cleanly. I, I find that uh, individuals that struggle with uh, compulsion or addiction are often deficient in one of three relationships. Um, and uh, that is relationship with self, um, how they uh, view themselves, how they perceive themselves, you know, how they're treating themselves from a nutrition and exercise level. Like those things, a deficiency in these areas can, uh, can, can result or kind of lead to or make you more vulnerable to addictive or compulsive patterns. The second is relationship with others. And this could be a relationship with your more, most intimate relationships, uh, but it could be also be your relationships and how you treat and how you perceive those around you. And then the third is a relationship with a higher power and how you view yourself to the world and, and to, um, to God and a deficiency in any one of those relationships um, can result in you being much more vulnerable. And so one way that we look at this uh, from a recovery standpoint and a healing standpoint is we look at this from a, a therapeutic lifestyle perspective and we want to say, okay, you know, what are the root contributors to that, these patterns and behaviors in your life? And a lot of times we are not connecting the dots to things like nutrition or, or, or sleep or stress or, uh, you know, past trauma or my relationship with my, my spouse or girlfriend or family or, again, my, my spiritual relationship and my, how I'm, I'm dedicating myself to something bigger than, bigger than me. And as we look at these areas and, and find kind of where we, as we strengthen these areas of your life from, from a therapeutic lifestyle perspective, what we've found is that individuals have much more capacity to overcome those triggers or challenges or urges that come along that are natural, that, you know, we are, you know, warm-blooded individuals and we see a beautiful woman and the natural tendency is to, 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 to be attracted to that, that, uh, that image and that body and, and that person. But those images can overtake us and take us down a path that is very harmful unless we are strengthened in these other categories of our lives. And so um, I find it extremely hopeful and extremely exciting to recognize that you don't have to embrace the once an addict, always an addict mentality. Mm -hmm. You don't have to embrace this idea that this is just part of who I am. Um, the reality is, is as we make even small adjustments in our lifestyle and in, in, in these relationships, we can have profound influence over our capacity to overcome pornography and masturbation and other challenges. Amen. We can be strengthened. Correct. 
We can be fortified. And my mind has been absolutely blown by this tool called Fortify. So could you tell us a little bit about Fortify and how it can help us be free? So the reason why we developed Fortify, um, I was traveling around the country uh, talking to young people, um, primarily, you know, uh, high school, middle school, high school age kids. And um, it, it happened a few times in the very, very beginning where, you know, kids would come up and say, hey, I love the mission. I'm on board with the cause, but I'm struggling. What can you recommend? And at the time I was like, oh, OK, sure. And I would, you know, recommend, um, you know, either some therapists in their area, which required parental consent and a credit card. Um, I, I could recommend them talking to an ecclesiastical leader, which required kind of, you know, uh, talking to a parent or talk, you know, openly talking to somebody that they maybe uh, weren't at that time comfortable talking to, uh, and so all these ideas that I was like giving them were uh, things that they to them were like a Mount Everest uh, that they were, I was asking them to summit, and they were either unable or unwilling to do. And so they're like, okay, you know, basically they were saying, well, I'm fine, I'm not that bad, uh, you know, uh, let me stay in this dark corner until it gets much worse, and I get older and I have a credit card, then I can come and address these more, more serious challenges that I was facing at that time. Again, not an option. Right. Yeah. Like that, we kind of said, not okay. So at first it was a few kids and then it was literally hundreds, then it was thousands. And then literally over time, we were getting tens of thousands of messages from all around the world from young people saying, help. I don't have a credit card. I don't have, I, I don't, I, I can't talk to my parents. What do you got? And so we decided to, to invest heavily into developing a, a, a free resource for young people that could be accessible anywhere in the world, that they could kind of come in and, and, and get some of the baseline support, some accountability, um, ability to track and visualize improvement, ability to connect with others on this same journey, and, and to learn some of the the baseline uh, knowledge around what they are struggling with and how to overcome them, some tactics and strategies. And so we, we call it, we developed this over years and we call it Fortify and we released it, a, a youth version and an adult version. And you can find that at joinfortify.com or at, in the app stores. And um, it really, we created it not as a replacement to groups, not as a replacement to therapy, not as a replacement to other strategies that you might have in your in in, in uh, your belt, but rather as an enhancement to all of those. So Fortify, uh, we don't we don't tout it as the answer. We tout it as a part of your strategy tool, and it's a way to kind of be a companion with you along the path. And there's a free version, even for adults, a free version. So just get on, start commu connecting, communicating with others around the world. Start tracking and visualizing that improvement over time and start learning about how you can improve. And then if you have other things in your, in your community or at your disposal, other, uh, other uh, things that can enhance you, bring them. Bring yeah. them because that is going to be what makes the difference. Absolutely. This is a tool I believe everyone needs to have in their tool belt. If you operate on digital devices, which we all do, you need to be able to transform them into part of the solution. And right. that's what Fortify helps us do. Right. I have to say that you guys did an update recently to the app and it looks really, really good. It's so easy to track and see your progress. And that's huge. I used to think of tracking the days as oftentimes reinforcing <laughs> shame of like, oh, I messed up again. Now I'm back at the beginning. But you guys don't take that approach. No, we, we want it to be something that, look, we want to meet people where they, where they are. And when they come in, they want to, to be able to celebrate the victories that they do have every mm -hmm. single day that they have a victory. We want to celebrate that with them. We want to like, and so we, we've devised a gamified approach to this with coins, earning coins along the journey and along the path. We're about to do a, 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 another significant update in that regard. Um, and, and, you know, we want to celebrate with you. Uh, along the way. So we're tracking daily patterns. And then when you do have a setback, and by the way, setbacks are a part of the recovery journey. Okay. So it's not all is lost. It's not, you know, you know, what, a, what a, might as well binge. It's, it's literally a learning opportunity. So when a setback does occur and you can kind of step back, 
pause for a moment and consider kind of all the variables that may have led up to that. Some of the things that maybe that, you know, environments that you may have been uh, in uh, preceding that, some things that might have triggered that pattern of behavior, some shows or TV, uh, thing, uh, you know, shows that you were watching or exposed to. Um, some emotions or feelings that came up for you that might have triggered some of these things. As you can kind of map that out a little bit and just say, okay, this happened, it, it, it happened, but how can I turn this into a positive? And that is to kind of document and recognize that. And over time, you can start to see patterns and behaviors, both for your victories and your setbacks, that will kind of clue you in and spark some aha light bulb moments. They can say, oh my goodness, it seems as though when I am stressed <laughs> or when these things occur, yeah. this is the pattern that happens. So, yeah. so I can start to recognize those details of like, hey, weekends, when I'm traveling and I'm uh, stressed, these are the most vulnerable moments. I can start to recognize them before they happen and say, okay, I'm going to fortify myself against these mm -hmm. challenges and I'm going to start to reach out to uh, uh, maybe my allies. Or, or I'm going to, you know, engage in some uh, practices and, and behaviors that I know can strengthen me and, and kind of fortify myself against these challenges. And, and, and you will start to see those setbacks occur less and less and less frequently until you are in control and you have the ability to overcome them. So uh, we don't look at the tracking as a, as a uh, shame reinforcement. Um, we look at the, it, it as, a, as a way to um, be a little, little bit more strategic um, with, with how you're overcoming this and, and a way to celebrate with you in the, in the victories that you are achieving. Clay, you speak about this with so much passion. <laughs> I'm passionate about this stuff. I've dedicated my life to this over the last 12 years and, and I'll never give up on, on this. I, I feel like you feel this, I'm sure. It's a calling that we feel to say, let's, let's do what we can to help other people. And I'm sure many of the listeners feel the same way. Like, what can I do? And the coolest thing is that you don't need to come out with a program or you don't need to write a book necessarily or start an organization, although all of those things are on the table for those that feel ambitious enough. But regardless of what kind of platform you might or may not have, you know, individuals can have a profound influence over uh, the lives of those that they are, are surrounded by. Um, I love the quote by Edward Everett Hale that says that I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And I will not let what I cannot do interfere with what I can do. And that, I love that quote because it speaks to just how uh, powerful uh, an individual can be regardless of their, you know, resources or their, you know, their social media following. Uh, um, I have been inspired by countless stories of individuals that have made uh, huge differences in their own lives and the lives of those uh, that they love because that you know they shared their story or they they were they helped that individual be more accountable or they used their talents and resources in a way that that inspired others so um i think as we link arms together the dent that we can make is immeasurable it is and for me the most important person who has made the biggest difference in my life and helped me achieve lasting freedom from pornography has consistently been just the person I can call. It wasn't my favorite author. It wasn't my favorite expert. It wasn't the entrepreneur, the person who created the program. It was that guy who on Fortify, when I hit the little SOS button, it goes to him. I love that. That's beautiful. Thank you. I, I love that button. And <laughs> it's great because usually we reach out to each other after a setback, but the SOS button says, hey, I need help now. Even uh, I'm, if in, I'm in need. I'm in need. Let's I'm in talk. need. Let's get together. Right, right. Before, during, after, doesn't matter. So you got the SOS button. We got daily discussions with hundreds of comments every day, people chiming in on different questions got this course with content, which is not actually religious in any way. It's just based on the science and the research that you guys have done. Yeah. And, and it allows individuals to bring their faith, whatever that may be, um, mm -hmm. bring their faith. And none of it uh, contradicts kind of uh, the, the, these moral uh, religious foundations that people subscribe to. 
um, myself is like none of it contradicts those beliefs. It, it enhances and, and gives you kind of context to them. So we, we invite you to bring them to the table and, and add them to it. And we, we do address the, the value and the power of those, value, those beliefs. But we don't necessarily take the program to, um, to subscribe to a specific um, religious value system. Because, um, I, again, we're trying to help as many people as we can. And, uh, and you know, our Jewish friends, our, even our atheist friends um, can find a lot of value here. Uh, it is true that I personally subscribe to a Christian value system. And that brings me a lot of, of happiness and, and focus and clarity in my life. And I believe that that can do the same for others. But, but a lot of people, if they find it in, in you know, the Muslim faith or the Jewish faith or, or some other kind of spiritual higher power belief, um, we want to help you regardless. We want to kind mm-hmm. of steer you in that path of, of, of improving your life. And so we mm-hmm. don't take the particular religious uh, stance, um, but, but we don't contradict anything that people might come to the table with. Could you talk a little bit about the coaching that is offered in Fortify? Yes. Um, I'm excited. Um, I'm not sure exactly when this is going to air, but I, let me tell you about um, either what has just recently launched or what will launch. We have a lot of, of, of great things coming down the pipeline, one of which is a, a, a completely uh, enhanced and improved coaching experience. For those that, that would like a coach to, to join them on this path, we have... Um, taken a, a new approach. It, it, you know, previously, if somebody signed up for coaching, it just basically, you know, they could write in to one of our coaches, our coaches would respond. And, you know, they didn't necessarily know who they're talking to, or what kind of expertise they might have. But they were just kind of like reaching out and, and hoping to get uh, an answer to their question. And, and for a lot of people, that's been very valuable and helpful, and, and uh, a positive experience. But we're going to take it a step further. We have uh, identified, uh, back to kind of the therapeutic lifestyle approach, we have identified key lifestyle categories and, and areas that the literature has identified as, as making one, you know, either, either more vulnerable or uh, capable of at overcoming these challenges. <clears throat> We've identified those categories and areas such as physical nutrition and physical health, relationships, trauma, mental health, and these these categories, we have expert coaches in each one of these specific areas that that have credentials wow. in those specific categories and areas, and and they are available to you at any time. So you sign up, and you you get into coaching, and they are sitting in your messaging queue right there, ready to speak to at any time. All we have um, eleven coaches identified, um, and those coaches are available to be talked to, and so. We even have one for financial wellness because we've uh, the literature has identified that you know sometimes finances can create that stress that can lead you to to patterns of of you know negative and and against the kind of the, the standards that you want to live again towards. So we even have a coach dedicated to helping you um, kind of get your finances in control. So these areas, even though you again may not associate them with your overcoming of pornography. Again, the literature would 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 suggest that they actually can have a profound influence in you getting to a better place to be more fortified against those uh, urges that come your way. So, those coaches are sitting there on standby, ready to talk at any time. Uh, in addition to the fact that we're about to release teletherapy with certified therapists through our apps, um, where you can actually sign up. And uh, so, this is a separate from your coaches. If you're needing actual therapeutic support and and somebody to to walk through that with you anywhere in the world, you can sign up for and 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 schedule a session and jump on and through through uh, teleconferencing, you can talk to that therapist for, uh, um, uh, through our app, and uh, it's a it's a powerful uh, kind of escalation pa- pathway for you. So in addition to the SOS, in addition to coaching, you have this ability to get access to therapists as well. And all of it can align with your specific Christian beliefs. Exactly. So I did not know that. That's really exciting. Yeah, we're just getting started. Oh my gosh. And right now, my jaw dropped when I went on the Fortify app and I saw that coaching in its current form is available for $10 per month. Correct. And that won't change with the update. I mean, it is different, right? Uh, And and I'm not trying to oversell. Like It is different. Mm -hmm. This is messaging based only. 
So you're not yeah. talking with this person over the phone or talking to them, to, uh, you know, video based. This is someone that you can just kind of reach out to and communicate with, and you can communicate with any one of these coaches at any time. Um, and, and it's, and it's, they're, they're specific to their categories and areas, but we do have some general things as well. So it's different. And, and the services that you provide and other very powerful and, and effective coaches out there, um, uh, provide something that's often a lot more involved. And so we don't, again, we don't look at this as like a replacement for, yeah. we don't see like, Hey, this is coaching instead of the kind of like personalized, you know, coaching that you're getting with, with Drew. No, we're looking at this as like, Hey, this is an option in addition to, and Drew is going to be uh, a, you know, a very powerful coach. That's going to walk you through, um, your, your journey on, a, on an individual basis. And this can help you as well be a part of that awesome. tool base. Clay, I would love to hear maybe one of the stories you've heard recently about people who have been finding freedom through Fight the New Dragon Fortify. Oh, oh man. <laughs> There's so many. There are um, there are so many stories coming through. And I don't, I want to be careful and not say that this is, that um, although people, uh, you know, suggest or, or attribute some of their successes to a particular tool or to, you know, an organization that has inspired and influenced them. I want to recognize that this is a team effort um, with not just uh, my team and my organization, but, but collectively. And so I, I don't want to take credit for all the stories that come our way um, because it is something that, that oftentimes is, is a, is a, a result of just many, uh, you know, I individual influences that they are experiencing. Um, but, uh, you know, to, to isolate, maybe um, we get so many stories of, of men that are struggling with pornography and, and, and struggling in their marriages and that are on the brink of divorce um, because they have violated trust and they, they don't know where to turn and they're, they're at their wits end. The stories that I sometimes get choked up over are the stories of, of these men and women that come to us. And sometimes they come to us together. They, 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 they write and they, they tell their story collectively or they send two different messages kind of expressing their, their story and, and where they have kind of been able to find that, you know, that trust again over time and how that they have been able to reconcile any, any challenge, you know, differences that they had in the past and where there is like true accountability and there is a humility on, on behalf of the husband's sake to say, you know, there, there isn't a defensiveness, there's a complete humility. And, and these stories that come in, they're not one-offs. They're not, you know, few and far between. They come in regularly. And that is what is so exciting to me to, to hear these relationships. Uh, you know, I, I believe that family is a critical piece of our, our societal structure. And when, I, when a family can be saved, when a, when a, when a family and relationship can be reclaimed, I, I, I just get excited about that. And I applaud uh, the, the, the journey that they have been on to get there. I don't know if that's the answer you were looking for. Uh, it's more general. I also, I love it when I hear from young people, uh, teenagers, this isn't necessarily something that I heard from, um, you know, messages that come in uh, to our email or other forms, but I was actually at an airport recently and I was sitting waiting for the, for the, you know, my flight to take off. And, and uh, this young man, uh, I could see him kind of looking at me from a distance for, for a while. And it was a little awkward, not going to lie. <clears throat> and uh, finally, he got up out of his seat and he came up to talk to me. And he said, two years ago, uh, I was sitting uh, in a presentation that you gave in California. I was in the Palo Alto area. And he said, uh, you gave a presentation about Pfizer and Drug and told me about Fortify. And uh, at that time, he was leaving to go on uh, a, a church mission to go and, and, and to, to do service in, a, in another country. And he said that he would not be there without having had that experience and without because it was like a moment where he kind of recognized his struggle. He got the courage to go out and talk about it. He realized that he wasn't alone. He got accountable. He got the tools and resources. He moved around. And he said that he is leaving on this mission to go change others' lives in, in positive ways because of the experiences that he had early on. And, and we both wept. We were both like embracing each other, just wet, weeping. And, uh, and it, was a, it was a powerful you know, moment. Uh, you don't always know. And I guess the moral of the story 
is you don't always know know what kind of impact and influence you are having as you open your mouth, as you, as you share your story, as you, you know, uh, help others and, and, and share your, your journey. Um, you don't know what kind of influence that is having on people. Um, you'll never know. And I think this is a, a tender mercy in my life to have maybe just a, a window in, for this one individual. And, um, and again, that's not to pat me on the back. That, that's that's just to kind of express how recovery is real and how 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 we can make a difference and no matter how big our platform is. Clay, what is your favorite thing about freedom from porn? <laughs> <laughs> or one of your favorite things? Let me say this. Most of the people listening to this have either struggled themselves or know somebody dear to them that that have struggled. I too struggled in my life and when I was able to truly kind of get pornography in the rear view mirror and, and, and get that influence um, in my past, and it took time and effort and accountability and openness and vulnerability and, and the support of others. But once I could do that, I was shocked. I genuinely shocked at how happy I was mm-hmm. and how much joy filled my life and how much clarity I had into who I was, what my value was and what I had the capacity of of achieving and at the beauty that surrounded me every day. Like I was shocked and it wasn't because of any promotion or any sort of accolades or achievement that I had achieved in my life. It was literally just getting pornography out that the fog lifted out from under me and I could see how beautiful life was in that. And it brought me an immense amount of joy. And I can tell you, I have heard that same kind of realization from so many others that have overcome pornography uh, that I I truly believe that it's not, uh, that it wasn't unique to me, that I believe that 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 is a, a, a reality. And it's shocking because you don't realize how foggy your vision is when you're in it. It is only when it's in your rearview mirror that you can say, oh my goodness, my relationship with my spouse, my wife is, you know, for those that are married, like, it's like smelling salts. Like you just, it's like you become awake to, to the, the value and the, and the, uh, of that relationship and the beauty of it and the beauty of those around you. So um, my favorite thing about uh, getting a, a porn-free life is, is how happy uh, one is once they get out of it. And uh, they always think that happiness comes in the, in the physical satisfaction of, of pornography and masturbation. Uh, sometimes we kind of get, we, the, you know, the world would have us believe that, that, that uh, happiness is in, you know, giving ourselves the, self, uh, the, the satisfaction of, of pleasure uh, at any moment instantaneously. And, and that it couldn't be further from the truth. And I think that not only from a you know, philosophical a theological, but a personal experience perspective, uh, I can attest that that happiness comes from aligning your behaviors with the values that you hold. I'm just going to let you drop the mic right there. Boom. <laughs> Clay, thanks so much for being with us today. Yeah. And also, thanks for including me as a partner in what you're doing, because now if you go to husbandmaterial.com slash fortify, when you sign up for fortify for free, If you decide to go with one of the paid options, a little bit of that will come and support my ministry here at Husband Material. Absolutely. So like you said, we're joining arms and we are fighting for love. I love it. We're on a mission together. Thanks, Clay. And for everyone else out there, always remember you are God's beloved son. In you, he's well pleased.